Now, let's talk about the function notation. And basically, the idea is when a function is defined using a rule or an equation using x and y for the independent and dependent variables, respectively, we say that y is a function of x. Uh, to emphasize that, you know, we're basically saying y depends on x. So what we do is basically when we say <coughs> you know, y is a function of x, or y depends on x. For function notation, we use the notation as y equals f of x, and that's how you read it. You will read it as f of x, okay? Now, f of x is just another name for the dependent variable y. So basically, you know, we substitute for y with f of x. Um, so let's say, let's say we have this example, y equals 3x minus 5. And again, the idea is, since, you know, we are identifying these certain relations as functions, we want to give them a certain notation so that when you look at the equation, uh, just by looking at it, you know it's a function, and you don't have to, you know, uh, try and identify it. Just by looking at it, you know it's a function, and that's why we introduced this notation here. So looking at this uh, equation here, you have y equals 3x minus 5. And this is a linear equation, so we know it's a function. And using our function notation, we can write it as... function notation we would have where you would replace the y with the f of x and that would give you f of x equals 3x minus 5. So basically you have y that equals f of x and you know y equals 3x minus 5 so f of x equals 3x minus 5. And, you know, if you were trying to work with this, like try and, you know, uh, find the values of y or, you know, whatever, if we wanted to use, let's say, when x equals 3, we can find y, or now as we're calling it, f of x. So instead of writing x, you would substitute it with whatever value of x you wanted to use. So you would substitute your x with 3 here. So you just basically replace your x with 3. Okay? Replace your x with 3, and then you would go ahead and find the value of your equation or your function. So we have y, which will equal f of 3, because that tells me I want to find the value of my function at x equals 3. That's what this notation right here tells me. And that will give you 3 times x, and this time we'll put 3 as our value for x, minus 5. Go ahead and solve this, and you have 9 minus 5, which is 4. So basically you have y equals f of 3, which equals 4. So basically, you know, even though we're using function notation, it's still all the same thing. If x equals 3 and y equals 4, then you have the ordered pair.
3 comma 4. That's how we would write it, right? Our order pairs x comma y, you have your 3 comma 4. And basically in your function notation, you would represent this as Function notation it represents f of 3 equals 4 you just would never put that y in the front and we know we're saying y equals 4 when x equals 3 you're still talking about the same ordered pair 3 comma 4 that's your x and that's your y right over there so when you write your ordered pairs as x comma y with the function notation you would write it as x comma instead of y, we would replace that with our function notation, so that would be your f of x. So your y gets replaced by f of x, and that's the only difference. So let's look at some examples to work with this function notation here. And let's look at our example here. <coughs> Now again, remember, f of x is just a name that is given to a function. You can use any other letter instead of just f. Like here in this example, we're using f of x and g of x to represent two different functions that we are talking about. So we're given two different functions. Now let's say we want to work with just the f function. We will say f of 0. We will say f of p. So we know we're talking about the f function. Now if we wanted to talk about the g function, we would say g of negative 2. We would say g of negative x. So we know we're talking about the g function, so these values will go in G and not in F. And just one more, we're talking about F of A plus 4. So for the F functions, you know, all these F of 0, F of P, F of A plus 4, we will look at just the F function. For G of negative 2, G of negative X, we will look at the g function right over here. So let's start solving these. The first one is f of 0. So that tells me all I need to do is use my f function and this time I'll replace my x with 0. When this is 0 that tells me my variable also will be 0. So 3 times uh, negative 3 times 0 plus 4 will give you this becomes 0, so you're left with just 4. f of 0 equals 4, and that's all we are looking for. Let's look at the second one here, f of p, which again tells me I am replacing my x with p now. So your original function is negative 3x plus 4. So instead of x, this time you put in the letter p, and you have negative 3p plus 4 as your answer to f of p. That's all you're really doing here. Now let's look at number 3 here. It's talking about g of negative 2. So that tells me I'm looking at my g of x function here. And I am going to replace all my x's with negative 2. So you have negative x squared. So negative of negative 2 squared. Now again, remember, you have two different negatives here. Be careful. 4 times x. So again, replace my x with negative 2 plus 1. Okay? Now, once you substitute for all your x values, go ahead and solve this. Negative 2 squared will give you a positive 4. This negative on the outside will make it a negative 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And then plus 1 will give you 
negative 12 plus 1, which is negative 11. So g of negative 2 is negative 11, and that's the answer that we're looking for. And that's all you have to do. Just look for the f of g function depending on what you're talking about. And let's look at the next one. That was number four. We were trying to find g of negative x. Right here you can see we're trying to find g of negative x. And your g function again is negative x squared plus 4x plus 1. So negative x squared, so again, replace your x with negative x, plus 4 times x, plus 1. So again, you replace your x with negative x here, and this will give you, again, negative x squared is positive x squared, and this minus will make it a negative. You end up with negative x squared, plus 4 times negative x is negative 4x, plus 1. And you can't solve this any further, so you stop right there, and that's the answer that you will come up with. And just one more to go. You had uh, the fifth one, which was f of a plus 4, and your f function is negative 3x plus 4. Now in this one, you can see we are substituting our x with a plus 4. So in this x here, in your definition, in your equation, you will substitute your x with a plus 4. So f of a plus 4 is negative 3 times x. And instead of x, we will put a plus 4. And then you had your plus 4. So this whole thing replaces just the x. You have your negative 3 and your 4 as is. Now, when you're trying to solve this, just distribute that negative 3 inside the parentheses. You'll end up with negative 3a, and then negative uh, 3 times positive 4 will give you negative 12 plus 4. You can combine the constant terms together, and that will give you negative 3a minus 8. And that is what you get when you substitute your x with a plus 4. So the idea behind this is whatever is inside your parentheses right over here. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a single term or it's a binomial term. Whatever it is, you will replace your x with exactly the same thing you have here in your parentheses and then go ahead and solve it and simplify it. That's basically what your function notation uh, is telling you to do here.